Right, here we up oh, up oh, here here we here here we here we here we go. <laughs> All righty, <laughs> technical difficulties. Uh, I'm dropping a ton of frames, but like I said, I'm recording, so you know whatever. Uh, we're gonna move on to Bethesda. Um, Bethesda. Bethesda. Um, some of us. Wow. I, I you know I'm just gonna keep on going because whatever. Um. Bethesda did an interesting conference last year. And if I look back to our scores, uh, I rated it a three beforehand. Dante rated it <laughs> a four beforehand and Rot a five before the conference. <clears throat> and when we exited said conference, I bumped up my score to a four, Dante to a six, and Rot to a six. Uh, so clearly... We weren't all that impressed, but it wasn't awful. So, so at least compared to EA, where we ended that conference at a one, two, and a two. So yeah, that was a disaster. So I guess going into this conference, what are our general thoughts? How are we? How how do we feel about Bethesda right now? Terrible. I mean, Awful. It's, it's not been good. They they sent all these ships out to sail. They were like, we are hopeful that these are going to be good things. And then they forgot that they loaded up their own ships with explosives and then set them all off by themselves. I think that uh, the con like even even with uh, our scores for the conference was more to do with just how funny the conference was. Yeah. Than with they, what they our were expectations very humorous. Were. I'm pretty like we sure. Had, we had Skyrim on the refrigerator. We had Todd <laughs> Howard talking about how sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, there were good jokes. I remember a lot of like from everyone i think a lot of hesitation with fallout 76 like even as early as the conference it didn't sound like a game that anyone would care about and then it wasn't <laughs> surprise yeah. surprise yeah we're gonna get into that a little bit down the road um i want to i want to save <clears throat> that one for the middle of the pack um yeah that's fair but uh, what about you, Dante? Where where is Bethesda sitting at uh, here and now, as compared to then? Like what I'm expecting from their conference, or how I feel about Bethesda as a company? Company wise, a two out of ten. We we dropped from <laughs> a solid average, uh, actually a little above average company, in my opinion, at a six, uh, because they haven't they didn't churn out anything particularly. Bad. Like, I felt Fallout 4 didn't blow me away, um, but I didn't hate Fallout 4. There was a lot of stuff I liked about Fallout 4. There was a few things that I was cold about, but I wasn't painfully, uh, this is gross. Uh, the Fallout 76 debacle is a travesty from start to finish. I, I think a lot of people have lost a lot of faith in Bethesda, um, especially this past what, what would you say, past six months or so? Um, it, it's it's awful. So I'm going to say they're at a healthy two. I would not buy a Bethesda game right now uh, without, like, significant reason to do so. <clears throat> I, I would not spend money on a Bethesda game the way it, it sits right now. I, I also heard that Elder Scrolls Blade did not, do, did not perform well. No. Nothing that they announced last year that they were then like that they then made into a physical tangible thing worked out at all fallout 76 was a huge debacle and still is i so as mentioned last year i am not as familiar with the inner workings of bethesda games because i don't really play too many bethesda games um so for the most part i've actually been relatively neutral uh, for Bethesda. Uh, yeah, the Fallout 76 stuff uh, was pretty bad, but I was expecting it to be pretty bad. 
So it just met my expectations on in that regard. I, I expected Fallout 76 as a game to be subpar because they were taking on an incredibly ambitious end goal that there's no way they could deliver. Um, but I was expecting like, kind of like Fallout 4. I was expecting to not be particularly great, but to come in at a solid four or five and be like, well, you know, at least they tried. Try try to find something in there where I was like, this is really interesting. This is great. Uh, and I found none of that at all in 76. And then the business practices, ho, 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 ho. we could not have messed that one up anymore if we tried. That was uh, real bad. When I heard it had no... Well, you know what? Let's just get into Fallout 76 right now. Because... Do it. <laughs> because that sounds good. It, it, it's inevitable, basically. Um, when I heard that it had no NPCs, I knew that yeah. it just could not... It just could not be the Fallout game that needed to be there. Yeah. You, uh, you, you, just, you can't... <clears throat> you can't pivot so quickly after a a game that was lukewarm like you have fallout 4 not <clears throat> not exactly fondly remembered uh, as fallout games go yeah it, there, it, like i said it's like a five or, or <clears throat> right yeah it's about a five it's a lukewarm hey it's a fallout game you, um, you can't and better than off of that. most you can't pivot into a new genre so soon after that and not either knock it out of the park or just completely fail. Like it was, it was like like when when you make up when you pivot like that, you have to execute because there is double expectation. It would be like like if uh, Gears had only announced tactics, moving into another genre like that where the fans feel like you're doing this instead of the game they want. You really need to make sure it's a good game. And uh, I don't think that happened. Like, I think that an NPC-less Fallout 76 game could work. I don't think it plays to their strength. Um, but hypothetically, such a game could work. But they didn't make it work. I would argue, I I feel like all the Bethesda games, whether it's Elder Scrolls, whether it's uh, Doom, well, maybe not Doom, but like any of these narrative-driven games, you, I feel like you just Doom has have, a great narrative. have to have <laughs> NPCs in them, you know, like you're... These games are built upon interactions with these NPCs and these characters and evolving those relationships or just killing them. And there's, if you don't have that, then is that game what you're trying to make it to be? Is Fallout 76 even a, a Fallout game if it doesn't no. have any NPCs in it? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I think it, it didn't work at all. The way I look at it is kind of like... A the way I looked at Halo Wars when it was first announced. Halo is an FPS. I don't mind if they're going to give me something in another genre, right? I don't mind them if they pivot. But they have to pull off the pivot. <clears throat> I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna look at a Fallout game and go, I only, I, you know, a, a fall, like, fundamentally a Fallout game has NPCs and is narratively driven. That's true. But if Fallout wants to make, wants to tell a story or wants to create a game in their Fallout universe that is something other than that, go for it. But you better fucking do it well. <coughs> if you're going to burn development cycles on something, it better be good. I guess yeah. it's, it's kind of rough in that department too because... Uh, at least to my recollection here, again, I'm not that familiar with Bethesda, but I don't think they have too many multiplayer games. No, uh, they don't. This was this was a 
very draft and that's why you know even even before even before we started to hear like some of the big changes i was hesitant because it didn't sound like it was playing to fall out of to bethesda's strengths because other than the elder scrolls online which was another thing that i was like why though um <clears throat> this i i definitely agree this wasn't to their strengths but at the end of the day if they want to pivot i won't tell them they can't pivot i just expect them to pull off the pivot or reap the consequences right like uh <clears throat> as an example i don't mind that there's mario kart mario kart is not a mario game but i don't mind that mario kart exists because it's good at what it wants to be yeah yeah no that's a perfect example that is like, a really good if example. Fallout, if really Fallout wants example. to spin off and do this like multiplayer persistent world craft crafting survival game, like they actually want to do it and they're not just tracing chasing a trend that hasn't even really been a trend for the last four years. Holy crap. You know what I just realized? Fallout yeah. 76 is Bethesda's Fortnite. It's a battle royale, player only, craftable, and building base. <laughs> but is it even battle royale? Can you even call it battle royale? God. I feel like it's it is their Fortnite in the sense it's 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 not even it's not their Fortnite. It's their DayZ. Yeah, no, it's a freaking mess, is what it is, dude. Like it has like all those little like I didn't realize until just now all the like really buzzwordy things that they were trying to push in Fallout seventy six until just now. Like that's the thing that's like, like it's 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 rust. Yeah, but, but there ten you go. Years late. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. like rust. It's it's or, like and, and, and um, what's another I don't, like, good one that's if, like if rust? Fallout There's like a lot of like, them. Because I think the Fallout universe lends itself pretty well to crafting survival games because it's a post-apocalypse. Most crafting survival games are post-apocalypses for a reason. <clears throat> like, that's a really good excuse to create a crafting survival game. But if you're gonna pivot, you have to pivot well. And yeah. they didn't. <clears throat> they gave us a half-baked rust clone yeah it it reminds me of rust a lot that wasn't like 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 if they had done this five years ago i would have said meh it was it, it was dumb but everyone like kind of like how i feel about battlefield 5 meh you know battle royale's in right now it frustrates me that everyone's chasing that trend but i get it you know, everyone's, you know, it's a trend that is being chased. But for Fallout 76 to come out, like, long after the, like, crafting survival trend has died, and then on top of that be a painfully generic kind of bad game, <clears throat> like, that, it was not a good move. Generally, I'm of the mindset that I'd rather a company try than then you know then not i guess like I, i'm generally appreciative that um they they do a spinoff maybe they learn something maybe they don't but i don't know where i actually sit when it comes to fallout 76 because it's it's such a strange departure yeah, and I, what i would say is that I I would definitely be more forgiving of Fallout 76 if I honestly believed that anyone at Bethesda like was passionate about this yeah. game. But it feels like such a corporate move, such like a poorly informed corporate move to chase this crafting survival trend that like I can't even give them that benefit of the doubt, you know? Like like hey it didn't work, but at least it was the game you wanted to make. But, like, I don't even feel that for this, right? So, let's just... Let's just throw out the hot take. 
or the hot prediction or the hot whatever and say Bethesda says, okay, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't do a great job on fallout 76 and we apologize for that. Uh, here comes fallout 76 dash two, where we improve upon everything, uh, Surely. that, that we did wrong and <laughs> maybe it's an expansion, you know, I don't know, whatever. Uh, we, we improve on everything that we did wrong and, and we listen to community feedback. Here we go. Or here you go. Uh, it, does, does <laughs> that, does that bring back faith to the player no. base? No. Uh, even if it I is good? Even if it's good, um, no one will know that it's good because no one will play it. Like <laughs> Fallout 76 is dead. Fallout 76 is yeah, I think very it's dead, and the only reaction that they will get from fans if they say anything other than Fallout 5 is the same reaction Blizzard got when they announced Diablo Immortal. Yeah, please, it's, it's going to be bad. Please give us our, the game that we want. And I, I know this is going on a tangent, and I really don't want to go on this tangent, but, and we don't. I, we should not go on this tangent, but I just want to throw it out there that I don't think Blizzard should have gotten the flack they gotten for Diablo Immortal. Um, yes, uh, it was it was outside of what people wanted, but people should have just looked at it and be like, oh, well, I guess we're just waiting longer for Diablo 4. But I mean, that's just Diablo me. Immortal's going to kill the Diablo team. I, I think this <laughs> is it for Diablo, dude. Uh, I don't think that at all. Uh, I, I I can't help but look at it and just like <clears throat> it, it's kind of like all of George R. R. Martin's side projects where it's like, please, hey, Martin, we really like Winds of Winter. And he's like, are you excited for Blood and Fire, my prequel book? Martin, <laughs> that's that's great. I'm happy for you. But, you know, Winds of Winter... I'm writing another sequel to the Duncan Egg uh, spinoff novel. Also, yeah. Martin, please, your health is deteriorating. <laughs> we need it now. <laughs> please, Winds of Winter. That's like, that's that's kind of how I look at Diablo Immortal. Is the fans don't want Diablo Immortal. They just want Diablo Four, and we just want Diablo Two HD, or or that, yeah. But like with Blizzard, I can't feel sympathetic for them. Because it's like they learned nothing. Like it's not they, that they learned this wasn't, nothing. This wasn't E3. They've avoided it. They this was like months after E3 when we had a clear model for what kind of reaction you would get with a mobile announcement and how to mitigate that reaction. You have EA announcing the Command and Conquer abomination and getting backlash. <clears throat> you have Bethesda announcing Elder Scrolls Blade and then going, oh, and by the way, Elder Scrolls, what are we on, seven now? Six? Six. Skyrim was Oh, five. and by the way, Elder Scrolls Six. And everyone going, oh, I'm not mad about this mobile game anymore. I'm getting the yeah. game I want. And then you have uh, <sighs> Microsoft going, who literally pop. did the bait. Yeah. Here's Pop. And everyone's just like dead inside. Like, just ready to be furious. And then they're like, oh, and by the way, Gears of War 5. Like, there was a yeah. very clear pattern you could draw from that and say, oh, the way to avoid backlash over a mobile game announcement in a mainline series where there is a hotly anticipated sequel that hasn't been announced yet is to just literally say, yes, there will be a game. Okay. Like, well, it can just be a camera flying over a generic environment and some music from the last game and then a title. And that's card. what they were, too. Yeah. That's all you need. And Blizzard said, eh, fuck that. We can just, we can go center stage with something Diablo, get all the fans riled up, and then it's a, a mobile game that's primarily exist, exists to capitalize on the Chinese market. Okay. Well,. I mentioned that I didn't want to get into that, but we can we can oh, move no. on from <laughs> the parallels of Diablo Immortal and Fallout seventy six and how they uh, they go in uh, similar offshoot directions and kind of met with lukewarm uh, expectations and yada yada this and that. Um, but uh, 
basically the the consensus here is Fallout 76. Uh, it's bad. It if was... they were going to do any kind of sequel to 76, they would need to wait. They would need to give us at least another mainline game because there is there isn't the market for another 76. Like they need to they they kind of need to do what Blizzard's doing right now and rebuild consumer trust. Yeah, I, I, Bethesda really has destroyed. Like if we're still talking about their reputation as a studio, it, it's in the toilet, dude. There's I legitimately have never thought to myself, oh, it's a Bethesda game. I won't buy it. I've always thought it's a Bethesda game. There's a certain level of quality I can expect until this past year. Uh, and now I I actually will not buy a Bethesda game. I will not spend my money with Bethesda because of this last year. Even if they announce dun 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 Elder Scrolls 6 comes out this year? Nope. I will not buy a release game from Bethesda because of uh, the way they've done the past half a year or so. Let well uh, actually before before I leave Fallout 76 um, do you think we're going to see any of that at E3 this year? And if we no. do, is it going to be a mistake? <clears throat> yeah. If they do anything with Fallout 76, it's just like when EA like did all that stuff with Battlefield. That was literally just, okay, we promise no <laughs> more microtransactions. Yeah, we promise. Front. Yeah, Battlefront. We promise, we promise. Fallout Please don't bully us. Fallout 76 is something that if Bethesda knows what's good for them, they will try and make everyone forget. Because no one is happy with that product. No one wants to be reminded of that product. So you it guys buried. You guys don't even want them to try and fix it. No, I think it's over, dude. I think, I think the ship I think has any sailed. Any time spent trying to fix fallout 76 is time that should be spent making a game that people actually wanted so let, let me let me draw a couple parallels here with sea of thieves and like i recognize it's not a fully equal parallel because one is a beloved franchise and one of them is a new ip yada yada but i feel like if if we're looking at these two games uh it it's more lopsided than than it should be if if we have Fallout 76, and it's part of a beloved franchise. Why wouldn't we want it to be improved upon? Whereas Sea of Thieves, it's like, oh, this is just some new IP that totally sucks on release. But hey, maybe they'll improve it, and maybe it'll be a good game. Well, I think the difference is, I don't really, like, neither Dante nor I really care about Sea of Thieves. Neither of us it's expect true. Microsoft to improve it. Like, like That's I said, true. I, I think that other than the fact that it would look bad, I would expect Microsoft to just shut a rare. I don't expect to see any Sea of Thieves at E3 this year because it's just it, 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 it underperformed. But the difference is when Sea of Thieves came out, it didn't come out in place of a game I actually did care about. So like it, it, they didn't take a team that was working on something I liked and redirect them to a thing that ultimately I didn't like. That's essentially what's happened with Fallout 76, is they took the team that could have been working on Fallout uh, 5 and redirected them to this other project, and it wasn't good. And if they spend more time on this other project, that's more time they're spending not making the game that I want them to make. So, like, if Rare, if Rare, like, if Sea of Thieves had come out hot off of, you know, like, Banjo-Kazooie and Donkey Kong Country, and they were going to be working on this Sea of Thieves game instead of, like, working on Donkey Kong Country 2 and Banjo-Tooie, I would be fucking mad. So I, I don't think you're making uh, very fair comparisons here because uh, Sea of Thieves, you can definitely arguably say that they made that instead of, say, a Banjo-Kazooie 3E or... See, but no, but the thing is... If Rare made Banjo 3 right now, it would be bad. It would I be really bad. No, I, like, there, there's a reason that Dante had to burn two miracles to pick Banjo 3 as his Like, Like, pick. let me put it to you this way. We could get Banjo 3 in workable, good condition. It'd be, it'd be a great game, but 
we'd have to put up with cancer. We'd have to delay the cure for cancer by 50 years, and all of Africa would no longer get the free uh, food and health care that would also come from that other miracle. Okay, we'd but have to sacrifice some big wishes here. Let me let me interrupt by saying I thought Fallout 4 wasn't met with very good reception either. So I, I think Not, it's Fallout okay. 4 wasn't a it good just wasn't game, bad, but it wasn't like a bad game. But the thing is, Fallout the franchise isn't dead yet. Banjo Kazooie is dead. It has been dead for a long time. Donkey Kong Country isn't dead, but only because I guess Microsoft like like I guess there was like a an ownership thing where Nintendo retained Donkey Kong Country even though Rare made it and now we're getting new Donkey Kong Country games and they're good. Um like Sea of Thieves, the team that made it, there is nothing that they could have worked on that I would have been excited for. Right, like they 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 have there, there's nothing I expect from them. So for them to not deliver, I had no expectation. There are things that like even if I don't care that much for Fallout Five, lots of people want Fallout Five. Like Fallout is not yet dead. Yet, lots of people really want Fallout Five. Lots of people really want Elder Scrolls Six. And I do. So Fallout Seventy Six is eating development time that could have been going to Fallout Five, and is an objective, demonstrable failure. So basically, what I'm hearing is it's up to me to try and defend Fallout Seventy Six because I don't really have the attachment to Bethesda that you two well, do. Well, I mean, you don't have to de- you don't have to defend Fallout 76 because it's undefendable. Well, like just go ahead, give that expo up. Like he's already rushed it, dude. It's done for. <laughs> but just sack like, it. I uh, I mean, as I said, like even even I don't even know if Fallout 76 is a game where I would say like I'm I'm glad they made it so that they can learn from their experiences or whatever, but if if the game did not do good on release, I wouldn't be mad or disappointed or anything like that that they're trying to improve it because that just speaks volumes. Like, imagine for a moment if Classic WoW came out and oh, was no. an absolute dumpster fire, was just complete trash, didn't work at all, and Blizzard stopped putting out content for retail WoW to fix Classic WoW. So- so basically, classic WoW all over again, 2004, all again. No one would be happy. Um, I, I don't think, like, Blizzard is a gargantuan studio that has multiple development teams, so right, that's not a realistic outcome. Right, I'm just, I'm just picking something that I know you would actually care about. The point is... I don't care about classic WoW, though. <laughs> Well, okay. No, no, but you care about retail wow, don't you? Uh, At least a little bit. Sure. I mean, sure. He does here and there. Sure. I'll, I'll just say sure. I, 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 I like wow. To run dungeons. I like. Like World my point is, you don't have skin in the game, but the rest of us, like I don't really have skin in the game, but I understand why people have skin in the game. Fall like it's a confluence of things. So Fallout seventy six is very transparently a corporate move. Like this is this was not a passion project. This was not something that lots of love and care went into. This wasn't something that failed because it didn't have a budget or whatever. This was a cynical corporate move start to finish that didn't work because the executives were five years out of date on what trends they should be chasing. So that's part of it. Any, Any time spent on it is a waste for that reason. I don't. Too. I, I just. Don't, I don't even think it's about a redeemable thing or a time thing. I think something like far more basic. I'm basic UGG boots pumpkin drink here. Uh, I, I just boots. think that it's uh huh fur. So uh, I think it's completely just. Uh, there's no way they can fix it. I think there's well, no way to fix Fallout thing, 76. The second thing I'm gonna say is Fallout 76 falls so far outside of uh, Bethesda's norm like their strengths that 
like like it was a risk to go in on it doesn't seem like it's worthwhile to double down on yeah i i really think like, that it's just not like fixable. it was it was already a long shot there's no guarantee they can like there's it's very doubtful that they can fix it if they couldn't even like pull it together to begin with and i have a better answer for you axel when you were talking about earlier why we think that uh sea of thieves is okay to spend time on to try and fix and why fallout 76 is not because sea of thieves the biggest problem that i have with sea of thieves is there's just not enough content it's not that it has bad content, it's that it doesn't have enough content. With Fallout 76, the problem isn't only that it has limited content. The content that it has is freaking awful. Okay. It's just bad. I I don't This this is going to be in response to Rot's first point. I don't oh, yeah, actually yeah, yeah. agree that this that Fallout 76 is a corporate move. I actually think it's an experiment. I, I experiment with what? I actually legitimately think Bethesda was interested and curious to see how one of their games would fare in a multiplayer environment that wasn't necessarily an MMO. Because we talked about this last year, about how in the Elder Scrolls universe, a lot of people want a multiplayer, like a limited scope multiplayer Elder Scrolls game. Right. But this experiment teaches them nothing about that. The, what I... people want is co-op story games, like where there's a narrative and you can be the dude that's helping the main character so you can play with your friend. That's what people want. This was not that. This was, can we make Rust, but it's Fallout. But I, I don't agree that it's trend chasing though, because Rust hasn't been popular for forever. So why like I don't I, I don't see that as a, a good idea. But I don't see why any like I don't see what they learned from rebuilding Rust but in Fallout. Well, I mean, you you have to Other think about it the... more systems wise. Like, okay, they just built their first we'll just say their first multiplayer game. Now they they figured out more things about servers, about how player interactions work, how character interactions that they don't have are affecting the the player base and how they approach the game. See, but my counterpoint to that is any any of that that's relevant, they learn from the Elder Scrolls online. I don't like any any back end stuff, servers, netcode. I don't think they're developing that, sort of that though. <clears throat> um and they didn't learn anything else because there are no character um, there, are no, there are no NPCs. Yeah, uh, Elder Scrolls Online isn't developed by Bethesda, so they wouldn't necessarily... It's published, it's published by Bethesda. They could say, hey, can we borrow your system? Like that, <laughs> that's a thing that happens within published... Uh, like developers rent out their tools to other developers they work with and publishers they work with all the time okay but we, we can definitely recognize the scope that M and an mmo is significantly different than a, a few i mean only on the back end only in scale like in in like quest design yeah very different but what what people want is a multiplayer game with the same quest design as a single player game just there's two people doing the quests now they want D, D, but elder scrolls they don't want the quest design of the elder scrolls online they don't want fetch quests and mob grinds they just want the elder scrolls but co-op like I I definitely don't think Fallout 76 is a step backward towards that. I don't think it's a step backwards. I just don't think it's a step at all. I don't think anything was learned. It was a waste of time. They built Rust, learned that Rust hasn't been popular for five years. They should move on. I don't think it's fair to say that they didn't learn <laughs> anything, but we can move on. It's, it's not all that important. Um... 
why don't we actually move on to Elder Scrolls? Um, the whole mythos of Elder Scrolls. We got online, we got six, we got blades, we got legends. It's it's Elder Scrolls everywhere. We got Skyrim on Alexa. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's everywhere. I've heard of uh, Legends. What's that? That's the card game. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, undoubtedly, we're gonna get Elder Scrolls this year at Bethesda's conference. We're going to get more information about uh, Elder Scrolls 6, yeah. So I guess it's just a thing of... Are, are, will it, is, be, will is, it be interesting? Is Bethesda going to continue to push Legends? I, I'm assuming it has to be pop, popular enough for them. Um, well, I mean, it's a, it's a collectible card game, yeah? It doesn't yeah. have to be popular to print money. They just need to get the right people in there. I guess that's that's entirely fair. As long as there's just enough people for the whales to be having fun, that's you know like that's all they need. So you know we might we they'll talk they'll probably talk about it. Um, I don't know if there's going to be anything exciting there. More cards, probably I would guess. Uh, I was actually thinking, which is <sighs> along the lines of Elder Scrolls Online, that we probably see something expansion related although didn't they just do an expansion for elder scrolls online didn't they do like yeah, morrowind they, they, had, they announced an expansion last year so i have to and i think they i think they launched that expansion very recently so i don't think we'll see an expansion for elder scrolls online i don't know if we'll see anything like we might see some like minor stuff for elder scrolls online but i don't expect to see anything big and you guys mentioned earlier that Elder Scrolls Blades, I guess, did not launch. It was not. Yeah. It was apparently not well received. I, it pretty much tanked. It was. It was. Uh, I mean, it was a mobile game. So I looked at it and said, ah, "That looks cool, I guess." Oh, Elder Scrolls Six. You know, thank God you're announcing something that anyone cares about. Like, basically, like all mobile games. No one it really existed. cares. It, it existed, and it was not a substitute for what I actually, or what fans would actually want from the studio. So it didn't offend. But okay. that's the extent of, that's the extent of it. I've heard that it did not perform well. So I guess we'll <laughs> move on from that, because I don't play mobile games, and I'm not really interested in mobile games, and I'm not really interested in that game. Yeah. But, um... I guess at last year's E3, we had a lot of time devoted to Fallout 76. And while I'm not, yeah, we gig. while I'm not necessarily um, saying that Elder Scrolls 6 is going to get some attention this year, or Starfield is going to get some attention this year, uh, in that vein, but what about some of the other games that Bethesda has, such as Doom or Wolfenstein? Or um, maybe like a Prey sequel or something like that. Is is some other game going to get this large chunk of time to devote to explaining <clears throat> the game? Is that even necessary? Oh, I, I definitely think Bethesda will have exactly one game that will eat up most of their conference. And that's going to be Todd Howard's bibliography. Um, it's it's time that we make the Todd Howard first person shooter that everybody's looking for. Bioshock Infinite? No, no, no. It'll just be Todd Howard the experience where you go around shooting people with amazing hop. Well, that's going to be that VR game. It's going to be a VR game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's called Super Hot. <laughs> um I I wouldn't be surprised if they pick a game. Probably has has Rage Two come out? Yes. Is Rage Two out yet? It did come out. Yeah. Um, and I believe Probably not that then. I believe uh, mm. a lot of reviews tend to say that the shooting mechanics are great, but the story is not so great. Is anyone surprised by that? Uh, considering not. how awkward Rage Two was at the conference, I'm I'm just amazed that they told the story. I'm surprised that the shooting mechanics are good. That's a it was surprise. so awkward, dude. 
Yeah. Um, um, what I mean, the bright side is there won't be a hair metal band this time. Yeah, I was well, gonna thank God. Gonna transition that into: Do we even want another musical concert to happen? No. No. Oh, Sony's <laughs> not here to rent two conference centers. That actually, was so weird. actually, um, I watched a video after that. They didn't rent those; they built them. Well, I know they built one of them. I think the other was just in a stage, but they built that the church that they started in. Yes. They they built the other one too. Of course, they did. I... The other one was like a giant, like yeah. inter inside stage. Yeah, they built that too. <laughs> it was crazy. Um, Why wouldn't they just okay. use an auditorium? Because they well, wanted because a customized they experience. Sony to do. Yeah, they wanted guys with loot. Anyways, um, let's move on to Doom Eternal, uh, which is uh, a sequel, air quotes, to Doom. 20 something something doom is hop yeah i mean the guys behind doom did a good job i'm excited to see what they do next um, I, i'm excited for them to keep doing doom because the the modern reboot of doom has been one of the only reboots of like an old game where i was like this is the old game but more and i and think it's been great I think I heard that the original composer is coming back too. Ooh. So uh, I guess the music is going to be as amazing as the more, more recent Doom was. Fuck yeah. yeah. It was good. It was great. Uh, it was very Doom. It was, you know, in your face. Go, go. And then, it, It's a great shooter. And then there was Wolfenstein, which uh, Dante has very strong feelings, feelings for. <laughs> I have feelings. Um, I don't remember I if, I, I think they announced something Wolfenstein related last year. Yeah, uh, Twin Blood or whatever. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, they did. Yeah, Young Blood. Wolfenstein Young Blood. Can't we contain not. ourselves? <laughs> uh, I guess we'll just leave that at that. Uh, Quake Champions. <laughs> Quake Champions. They They spent a tiny bit of time on that. And uh, as far as I've been hearing about this game, it's pretty much dead. Um, I don't think there's anything being spoken about for Quake Champions, but uh, mm. it's such an interesting environment in the gaming community where uh, we're getting some reboots. And, you know, you, you, can't, you can't really fault the developers who are trying to do something fresh because um, maybe they're just underestimating how many people actually want the original gameplay back. Um, but it is kind of sad to to see these these uh, new air quotes fresh ideas uh, being taken into existing IPs and just not working out so well. Kind of disappointing to hear. Um, but uh, Rage Two, we we kind of touched on a little bit. Um, it's it's never really a game that I myself would be interested in playing, but uh, the first Rage was just blah, and the second Rage just sounds like a little bit better than blah. So there you go, I yeah, guess. Progress. Yeah. <laughs> a step in the right direction. Um, now, a game that I've actually played and then stopped playing the rest was Dishonored. That was made by Arcane Studios, who is now making Prey, which is going to be the next game that I want to talk about. But um, is Dishonored dead? Because the sequel came out, had a bunch of problems. Then they came out with a standalone game that I think was supposed to be an expansion to the sequel. Uh, but they made it a standalone game because reasons. And that did extremely poorly. And I think Dishonored went on hold. We want more Dishonored. I mean... <clears throat> I have heard, aside from technical issues, I have heard mostly good things about Dishonored 2. Um, but I, it's, it's kind of like I don't know where you would go, like narratively, I don't know where you would go with Dishonored after a sequel. Like, Well, uh, spoilers for uh, The Death of the Outsider uh, standalone game, which... Uh, the title in itself is kind of spoilers, but uh, I guess I'll just repeat the title. Uh, the Outsider kind of dies. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and he's Oops. a guy that gives everybody powers. So yeah, well, I mean, like even even without that, like <clears throat> Dishonored, Dishonored has such a like very particular gameplay loop, right? Like the 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 gameplay of Dishonored is very specific. That like you know, like you you can only be Dishonored so many times, right? Like. Well, if you're talking about like story wise, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is like narratively, I don't know if there's like anywhere to go with a Dishonored three, right? Like the the plot, like the 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 way that the word Dishonored integrates with the plot, that only works a couple of times. Is is um, as much as I would not want this to happen because I think the setting of Dishonored is a really good setting. Yes, I, that's I I think that they could go to they could Assassin's Creed Dishonored and just go to different settings. I think the gameplay is really good. It's just they just need to do something a little bit fresher. I would hate if they dis the Assassin's Creed did Dishonored because the gameplay is neat. The setting is way better than the gameplay. Preserve the setting over all else please that setting is so fucking cool it is a really nice <clears throat> setting give me give me like any other game in that setting right like it doesn't even have to be called dishonored it can be called something else but in in that setting on those aisles i want to learn about the whales and all of you know the the expeditions to the other continents and whatever give me something like give me something else i don't know if there's going to be another dishonored game but i would not mind a spin-off in that world i would be very okay with that as well i actually don't have a dog in the dishonored race okay then uh how about prey uh i mentioned probably last year that there was this really cool trailer that i'm gonna try to look up of um this game called prey 2 and it looked really really cool and then it died and then we got prey and last year they announced um a Moonbridge, couple right a couple prey things yeah like uh yeah the expanded uh, dlc yeah and uh that stuff looked kind of interesting so um it would seem inevitable that there's probably another prey project on the way are we going to see that this year probably uh i i hope so mm -hmm. I, I speculate that probably not, but I hope we do, because I think Prey is a wonderful horror game. Um, not a, not necessarily in the traditional way of this game is really scary, but more in like the suspense way, where the enemy system is really unique because of the whole mimic thing, and uh, the way that it really gives you tons of different ways to approach the game. It reminded me a lot of a lot of the older adventure games, not like point and click adventure, but actually like first person adventure games where it's like, here's a plethora of options you have. Pick what you want to solve your problem because the gun system's great. The glue gun might be one of my favorite sci-fi weapons of all time. It's really fantastic. Uh, I, I just overall, <clears throat> I'm impressed and I enjoy Prey. Prey kind of reminded me of original Dead Space. That's actually one of the things I was thinking about because it's just more of that. Yeah. Because you don't like, have to go through combat if you don't want to. You don't have that option in Dead Space. There's like good suspense, good atmosphere, an interesting story. You have like a yeah. very kind of unique twist on um a more yeah, the industrial enemy. weapons in uh and then shooting limbs rather than heads for dead yeah. space like yeah. like aesthetically i would not mind getting another prey but seeing the direction dead space went like terrifies me even though it's a different, ah, like everything yeah, is different. i'm worried about that everything is different like it's not ea it's you know but oh man like like, cause, cause Dead Space is a game that ends, and you're like, well, where do you go from? Yeah, like, where and do you go? Prey, I don't know. Like, is there is there anywhere narrative 
go with Prey. I have no idea. And if there isn't, you know, would that time be better spent making something Prey-esque, but not Prey, you know? Like, rather than a sequel, like, not even something in the same setting, but just, like, another kind of sort of survival horror, sort of action RPG. Yeah. Uh, nifty game like that. Like, something in the same genre, but not in the same universe. I, I think that's fair. Like, I'd, I'd probably rather see something like that than to see a sequel. Okay, that's that's very fair. Um, and uh, I mean that's more or less Bethesda. Um, I have here Bethesda mods. Um, they they I think they kind of talked about this a little bit last year, possibly. Um, but uh, is do you think mods are still going to be a thing for Bethesda? They're they're paid. I'm very skeptical. I feel like the backlash to Bethesda mods has been so so huge that they wouldn't possibly like touch that again, you know? Like they And that they, makes me think they, that they're gonna for sure do it because of how awful Bethesda's been with community feedback lately. Oh, that's that's, that's fair. I, I feel like they <laughs> shouldn't. I feel like they shouldn't go anywhere near paid mods again. Or if they do, they need to tread very carefully and make it like very clear how this is beneficial to the mod makers and not necessarily to them because they're uh they're not doing so hot right now as a studio with with brand and image and image so i <clears throat> it would be a really bad choice to go near mods without like a very like almost like a wow classic style we're not going to benefit from this we're probably going to take a loss this is purely for your benefit kind of approach so uh to wrap up on bethesda then um last year they had a um, at, at least in the Todd Howard segment uh they were kind oh, of oh the big todd they were kind of humorous and uh they kind of uh made fun of themselves for uh, a a variety of uh, subjects and things like self -aware. that self-aware yeah very self-aware thing that saved the conference um and that was uh, as Dante just pointed out like a very refreshing thing for their conference that really elevated it uh, a lot higher than it would have normally been without it so is this something that we're we we can look forward to this conference i mean i hope God, i hope so i hope todd, How todd howard gets up on stage and says just buy my game let, let me <laughs> let me God, let me put it to you this happen. way like as straightforward as possible if Todd Howard doesn't get up on stage for Bethesda this year at E3, Bethesda is dissolving and liquidating. <laughs> That's where we're at now doom with and Bethesda. Doom. If if Todd Howard doesn't make it on stage this year, that's it. It's over for Bethesda. Now, if uh if Todd Tom makes it up there, then hey, maybe maybe we can salvage this thing, but it's up to the Todd now. All right, so do we have any miracle picks for, for Bethesda, then? I'm sticking to my Todd Howard biography uh, first-person shooter. I would say miracle pick would be Fallout 5, like an announcement Ooh. of a new Fallout game, main title <laughs> so, sequence, sorry about single-player narrative. <laughs> it, it won't even be called Fallout 5. It'll be called Fallout Sorry for 76 <laughs> 5. <laughs> <laughs> if if they give us, if if they announce, especially if they pull a Gears of War, and they actually oh, have God. like lots of like footage to show of it, like not just a trailer, but like lots of stuff, that's my miracle pick. That would be pretty crazy. Mm. I'm actually looking over some of the games that they've published before, 
and uh, Brink was actually one of them. That's a, a game that everyone's forgotten about. And also Evil Within. Uh, forgot about that one as well. The Evil Within is just not a very good game. Yeah, um, Evil Within is the, better The better first forgotten. one, yeah, the first one was, I'm pretty sure they have two, do they not? I think it's there, Evil yeah, Within. There is a sequel for some reason, yeah. Yeah, the sequel was so amazingly forgettable. The Evil Within one was an okay game that honestly I didn't dislike. Um, I actually enjoyed the Evil Within one. The problem not, with not, the Evil Within not anything one... above the six. Like it's a solid five, and the... some parts of it are just annoying. The problem with the Evil Within one was that it was trying to be like Resident five Evil four different survival yeah. horror games at the and same it didn't time. Do any of them well? No, it did remind me a lot of Resident Evil four for a lot of the parts of the game. And those are the parts of the game that I enjoyed the most. Um, there were some sections of the game that were just really annoying. And at no point of the game did I really feel like the the horror suspense they were going for in some parts, like the hide parts of the game. Um, those were just annoying. At, at no point did I feel like, oh, I gotta, oh, here he comes. Oh, no. At, at no point did I feel any of that. Uh, it was literally just, this is really annoying. Let me go back to shooting things. Um, and, and I feel like that that's pretty much a failure for a horror suspense game if you're annoyed by the suspense parts. <laughs> well. Rather than, like, you know, spooked. I'm continuously looking at these games and the only titles that bethesda game studios has ever made are the elder scrolls fallout yep fallout starfield and ihra yep. professional drag racing 2005 so that is my miracle oh pick oh my god that's it <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get oh yeah a we didn't sequel. talk about starfield at all uh, what is there to talk about? No, what do you guys think they're going to... Gonna, uh, what, what kind of game do you guys even think it's going to be? It's, well, it's the new... Um, Sims in no Space. Sky. It's going to be Sims in Space. See, I just got two different answers there. I mean, neither of them are going to have any content, so what's the point? Oof. Oof. Um, Actually, like, No Man's you... Sky had plenty of content. It was just... You had to make it up yourself. <laughs> Here's three sticks and a rock, little Jimmy. Use your imagination. <laughs> um, well, I mean, No Man's Sky is actually a good example of why I don't want them to fix Fallout 76. Because as I understand it, like No Man's Sky has been largely fixed doesn't matter. And, no one's and no one cares. I, I was, I was going to say that uh, I actually have heard that not only is No Man's Sky relatively fixed, but it is actually what would be considered an enjoyable game now. Yeah, but nobody matter. cares. It doesn't matter. No one's going to play it. Right. So yeah, it was, that ship it was a has waste sailed. of time to fix. Yeah. Like, for them, it's good public image because at least there was, like, we didn't expect any, like, it's not like, you know, the time they spent fixing No Man's Sky was time they could have been making Fallout 5, but... Man, the No Man's Sky debacle was just crazy. <laughs> like The best part of No Man's Sky will forever and always be that they just put stickers over the back of the boxes to get rid of the multiplayer part. <laughs> like, that right there, that very specific event tells you exactly where we're at that's just that's it boys uh, yeah but yeah uh, in, in all starfield, serious will we see trailers uh will we see anything of starfield no i <sighs> i 100 i 100 think that starfield is going to go the way of elder scroll 6 and we're not going to be shown anything until it's ready Ooh, I don't know if they'll wait that long. I don't know if Bethesda can wait that long. Yeah, they, I was gonna say. I feel like I feel like well, even with the Elder Scrolls Six, I feel like they're gonna have to give us something because you you can't really just be like, "Hey, it's done when it's done," when everyone's mad at you for the past five games, right? Like, 
But but you're also asking it to be the you've been asking it to be the the same both ways basically. You want them to announce just a teaser trailer of Fallout Five, but right because they haven't done that yet. They've done that with Starfield a, a year ago. They do need to do like like you were saying. They need a game that's going to be the game they talk about. Like they do need like a headliner. Like if you're like I was saying, they need we need a teaser of Fallout Five with Fallout like with Fallout seventy six or with a mobile game. My miracle pick is Fallout Five. I would accept just the teaser because they haven't announced it, but they announced Starfield, and I said earlier like for I said earlier. Uh, Microsoft can get away with just a teaser of Battletoads a year ago and not tell us anything about that game because no one was expecting anything of Battletoads, but they can't do that with Halo. We need yeah. to see Halo this year. We need to see something from main Bethesda. Like, the teaser of Starfield and the teaser of Elder Scrolls last year, those worked, and they could work now if we had faith in Bethesda. No one does. I I I actually think that's that's all they needed. Um I I think they recognized that fans just wanted the I hope I'm using this word right, uh, affirmation. I don't think that is the right word, but I'm gonna use that word. No, it is. Um that those games exist. And and we got that, and I think fans are happy to wait. And I think they can wait. And so they don't need to see anything else because they know think, those games are happening. I think the, the problem is that they know those games are happening like they knew Fallout 76 was happening. But Fallout Fall 76 happened and has destroyed trust. But they, you're, like, you're, you're, you're we, changing the narrative a little bit because Fallout 76 was supposed to be a surprise announcement that was leaked beforehand. And so no, but what I, what I mean is that they know that these games are coming out, but they don't know that the games will be good because the last couple games have been bad. Now they need something not just to affirm that their favorite game is going to exist, but also that it's not going to be a colossal failure like the last couple games have been. They need more than just an affirmation of existence now because their their trust in the company has been eroded so significantly by recent events. It's not enough that there will be an Elder Scrolls 6, because if Elder Scrolls 6 comes out and is absolute hot garbage, that's not good. If Fallout 76 had come out and had been good, Bethesda could kind of rest on its laurels they wouldn't necessarily need to give us anything because, hey, it's done when it's done. You want a good game, it'll be ready when it's ready. But we don't have that trust with them anymore because Fallout 4 was just okay and then Fallout 76 was bad. Elder Scrolls Blade was meh. Like... Okay. I... They need to renew trust. They're, I don't know. They're not going to do both. But there needs to be one of those two is going to need to have a trailer or something. Something to be like, fans, no, please, look, your favorite thing. Like, that's the other thing is they really need to pivot away from Fallout right now. Other than teasing Fallout 5, they really need to pivot away from Fallout. And unless they pivot purely to third party they can either pivot to the Elder Scrolls or they can pivot to Ray, uh, Starfield. I, I, I'm definitely in the boat of if they were going to show something this year, even a cinematic trailer, they would have shown it last year. Um, like, I guess Starfield did have a cinematic trailer, trailer last year. And so if there was something to show this year, it would potentially be Starfield. But... I personally don't think it's going to happen. Well, no, but what my point is we have, it's been a year, right? For the same reason Halo Infinite is almost certainly going to have more than a camera panning over a generic environment and some music, there is more to show of either Elder Scrolls or Starfield 
one of those at least one of those games is a year further into development than it was certainly there must be something they can show for it so are you going to be oh, are you going to be okay with them showing concept art yeah okay. concept art and that's that's what a tr uh, essentially what i'm expecting is so a teaser is short usually pretty generic announces that a game exists and then a first trailer is normally more specific gives you an idea of what the game will kind of look like but there's not going to be any gameplay they probably won't talk about like like it'll it'll essentially be like a cutscene, but it's concept art that's essentially like with, with starfield all we got was it's space and then there was like some lights or like a satellite or something like like we we know literally nothing about that game a trailer where we see is it sci-fi is it you know well, like it's in it, space i mean it, it's yeah. gonna be sci-fi is it though it's it's gonna be sci-fi um anyways let's let's move on to conference prediction here what are uh what are early three conference scores three Two. Oof. I know what they need to do. I don't think they do what they need to do. It's, uh, that's uh, worse than last year. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the direction that Bethesda's been going has felt very corporate. It has felt like very corporate with the way they handled Fallout 76 with their shift into publishing with the the way they handled the elder scrolls online like everything has felt more and more like i'm missing the word like out of touch basically like they have they are seriously out of touch with what the fans want and Todd Howard can crack jokes at Bethesda's expense, but at the end of the day, the way the company's been operating has been bad. Unfortunate. And I don't expect that to rectify itself anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, it's not looking great. I, you know, I mean, for a lot of those same reasons... I actually do think that the conference isn't going to be that good. Um, and, and just like looking at Bethesda, they don't really have a lot of games under their belt. And so pretty much all the games that I'm going to be looking at are, uh, as horrible as it's going to say, basically just the same games that we've already gotten. Um, well, I mean, they actually have, a, you know, they've got five Elder Scrolls games and... I, I was gonna say five, but I think it's only four fallouts. I don't think they. I think New Vegas was third party, right? Yes, it was Obsidian. Uh, it was Obsidian. I believe so. Yes. Like they, they've still they've still got like they've got a pretty decent like for for managing more than one major IP. Like most most developers are usually like they have their one title that they keep going back to, or they don't have any static. Like they don't recur. They don't do any sequels they just do like you know games within a genre so in the grand scheme of things like they've got a pretty decent number of games they just don't have a lot of ips and they've really soured one of those ips well i mean i i would i would uh look at blizzard in a lot of the same ways that i look at bethesda i mean yeah they don't have very many ips and a lot of the games that they've done are essentially games that they've already done um so uh starfield is a step in the right direction to to see if bethesda can do something else um but like i said i don't think they're gonna be showing starfield so um my prediction yeah, i expect i expect to see elder scrolls 6 i expect to see a little elder scrolls 6 my prediction is probably going to be a two. I really want to give a one, but I'm going to go with a two 
uh, just on the off chance that uh, maybe they do another skit that's going to be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm If Todd Howard gets up on stage and says, just buy my game, I will increase my score from a 4 to a 5. That alone is worth a whole point. That That's worth at least two points to me. You actually set so, a 3, right? Oh, did I? Then a 3 to a 4. <laughs> uh, Todd Howard is pretty much the pin for me for the Bethesda conference. Like I said, if Todd Howard doesn't show up to E3 this year, Bethesda's getting liquidated. Like, that's the first sign that the company's already gone under. If he's there, though, maybe we can still save it. I mean, he's like almost everything that's wrong with Bethesda as a microcosm. But, but at the, the same memes, time... The memes are so he's... good. I know. So... <laughs> okay. At least I'll have fun. Well, that's, that'll, I guess, wrap it up for Bethesda. Much shorter thing, because, uh, as mentioned before, it might seem like they have a lot of games, but they don't really actually have a lot of games. Um, and so, do we need a break? Do you guys want to break? Or do you want to go? Uh, I'm good to keep going if you're good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Then uh, we're gonna just going to take a brief moment of silence, and then we're going to move into Ubisoft. <laughs> 